What up, friends? Yeah, that's about right. And today we're gonna be reviewing Drake's newest album. Honestly, never mind. This is the seventh album overall by Canadian rapper Drake. Drake is one of, if not the biggest rapper in the world right now, so he honestly needs no introduction. However, he's been having a bit of a mixed reception as of late. More recent records like Scorpion and Certified Lover Boy showcase very bloated and monotonous projects, kind of hinting at Drake seemingly not putting as much of his heart into these projects as he used to. Some might even call these new projects flat out bad. <laughs> Honestly, Nevermind, though, sees Drake moving in a much different sonic direction. Ditching his pop rap aesthetic in favor of a house-oriented sound, I was interested in seeing if this would be the refresh that his career needed. It was not, as this album is largely as lazy and lifeless as the more recent records that preceded it. I really do appreciate him trying something different, but Drake approached this new project with the same lack of care that he's been doing recently, and it shows. I hope you like what you hear on the intro to the record, because that's pretty much what you're getting throughout the entire album. The beats on here are the bare minimum for House, oftentimes not even feeling finished, and a lot of this just sounds so samey. Some songs on here even feel like glorified intros to tracks that never come, and very little on this project stands out in a very good way. Many songs on here because of this aren't necessarily bad, they're just nothing. A void. Currents has Drake crooning in a monotonous vocal tone that strips away any and all emotion from this project as he largely does it everywhere. Currents also has one of the worst beats I've ever heard actually with this squeaking bed sample. It's so corny. It's so hideous. Like, why? I get it. He's fucking. I am being fucked alright. Fucked over. The song goes nowhere. The lyrics lack any sense of feeling. Like, why does this even exist? Who greenlit this? The Keeper is one of the few songs that actually stands out in being kinda good with a mellow piano making up most of this track's instrumental. The flows are competent and the chorus actually is kinda catchy despite it being so simple. The build up to the ending beat which is also okay especially as that piano picks up a bit. The song actually feels like it has a destination to reach, it sounds complete. Though I will say that the I found a new muse that's bad news for you line is an ominous omen for the rest of the record. Especially as we are back to the corniest shit imaginable with calling my name. This is not a song. This is an intro that doesn't lead anywhere. The beat on this thing is practically non-existent. There is no passion. An AI generated this when Drake typed in house beat. This is like the basic foundation of a garage band instrumental, like, I don't even know what he was trying to do here. The lyrics, little that there are, are atrocious. Your pussy is calling my name in your distorted ass vocals? How is that sexy? How? Sticky is not much better, largely feeling like a repeat of calling my name thematically if Drake actually maybe spent more than his lunch break working on it at least. Instrumentally, it does feel a bit closer to pop rap Drake, so a bit more familiar territory here. However, the beat is still just so bland and boring. Drake does sound a bit more lively here as he is rapping instead of singing, but there's still just nothing fucking happening. She want me to play with that cat. She loving how I making her wet. You know how sticky it get. These are real lines said by a real person on a real album. Again, how is this sexy? It, it, it reads like a porn script, like nobody actually says things like this. I will say though, I get a brief respite with Massive as it's one of the best songs on the record, definitely the best house song on the record for sure. There's a fairly interesting tone integrated into the beat alongside a fairly lively piano instrumental too. The drums also actually feel like drums, the instrumental doesn't feel like it's falling asleep. There's also a bit more punch to the transitions on this track, although I will say that the production does sound a bit overblown at times. You can hear this like crackle in the mix for some reason, I don't know why it's there. It's present on other songs on the record too, but here it's kind of noticeable. Lyrically it's also a bit better as we see a more introspective side to Drake as he is examining his past relationships with people and trying to reconcile with them. There's also actually some layers in the instrumental making it feel full and worth listening to. Tie That Binds is one of those ones where I can see where he's coming from, but the execution just leaves a lot to be desired. This one opts for a more house sound with the flamenco influence in the guitar that surges in, but the guitar comes in so abruptly that it sounds kinda awkward. The guitar player also sounds like he's just 
doing things? Like, was there a plan for this guitar passage? It doesn't sound like there is. He's kind of just doing whatever. I will say though that the guitar does add a core instrumental element to latch on to, making the song a bit more memorable than others on the project, but it feels more like a work in progress than a completed product. Lyrically, it's also alright, with some more poetic lines like kill me slowly with those piercing eyes, but there's nothing too clever on here. Liability is another bad one, with Drake seemingly just taking a normal sounding song and then slowing it down to the point where it's sleepwalking. The beat is just this smoggy 808, and the sound is so distorted that I just feel nothing listening to this. The track is also way too long for how little there is happening with no flow switch, no beat switch, no added instrumentals to shake things up, N nothing. Also, the line, calling me daddy, I taught you things that a father can't teach is kind of weird. I'm not the only one that thinks that, right? Like, especially coming from Drake. Jimmy Cooks, the last song on the record, is unquestionably the best song on the project, and I don't know why the entire album didn't sound like this. The beat is actually pretty cool with the opening little sample, the slick bass line, and the main sample that comes in that permeates the rest of the track. The flows are smooth, Drake actually sounds like he has some energy and confidence, and 21 Savage just fits in perfectly here and matches the vibe. The beat switch when Savage comes in is dark and cocky, and the overall aesthetic just has some bite to it. The guys sound hungry, they sound motivated here, with them both refusing to be pigeonholed, wanting to expand into multiple genres and artistic territories so they can essentially be on top and own it all. The rest of the album though, again, is just the bare minimum for house music. The tracks that I didn't mention aren't necessarily bad, they're just painfully boring. We get tracks like Text Go Green with the same beat being repeated throughout the 5 minute runtime or songs like Overdrive where the beat is the metronome that you would normally use when you want to compose the actual beat, not use it in the beat itself. The lyrics also aren't really anything to write home about. When they're not painfully cringy, like on Calling My Name and Sticky, they're mundane songs about love with not much passion, wordplay, or just expression in them. This extends to Drake's delivery as well, as more often than not he's drenched in so many different vocal effects that he sounds more like a text-to-speech program than a person. This sound does kind of fit the sparse nature of a lot of these tracks, but it doesn't make for a very engaging listen. I will say that this album is fairly consistent sound-wise, and while the beats aren't the most interesting things, they do have some cool ideas here and there, even if they were kind of executed sloppily. It also, for what it's worth, is fairly suitable as background music because of the smoother instrumentals and how the tracks kind of blend into each other at times. Maybe that's what he was going for, but, you know, still. At the end of the day though, honestly Nevermind is an album that does the bare minimum. Other than a few instances, it's so safe and harmless that I just don't end up feeling much of anything about it. There are four songs that are bad, like three songs that are good, and the rest are just kind of along for the ride as you put it in the background of a party that you don't really want to be at. Drake is content with mediocrity nowadays because he knows he doesn't have to try when it comes to selling his records. It's honestly kind of sad, although I will say this album is at least more sonically textured than Certified Lover Boy. Just listen to good house artists like Daft Punk, Underworld, hell, even like Chemical Brothers, Hot Natured, anything other than this. So, after all of this, I am feeling a light three. Not much really stands out as good or bad, and I just will end up forgetting about this album in pretty record time, I think. But of course we do have to talk about album covers on this show, and I think this is an okay one, I guess. It honestly looks more of like a metal album cover or a post-hardcore album cover rather than a Drake album cover, but, you know, the text is pretty cool, pretty stylized. I like the sort of sheen that's over it, especially with that rainbow gradient that's layered on top of it. Uh, the contrast with the stark black background to the more colorful text is pretty cool, and I guess that sort of rainbow gradient does have that glitzy sheen that you can kind of expect from a house project or something like that, so it's a pretty cool album cover for a pretty mundane album. But of course, those are just my thoughts on this newest Drake album. What did you guys think? Do you think this sort of experiment into house music actually paid off for him, or was this just the blandest way to go about it? Let me know, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell if you too sit in the corner of all house parties, and until the next one, farewell.